Introduce yourself. Who are you? I'm Kylie Van Dam, and I live in Houghton. Okay, very good. And who are you? Hi, I'm Dr. Billy Fields uh, from Texas State University, and I'm traveling through the Netherlands with my students and loving what I'm seeing. All right, fantastic. And you all know who I am. We're going to go right around Helton. All right, let's do it. So we're, so we're moving north of the Green Street, and then this is the kind of Green Street area without backing onto that Green Street. So you basically, you're talking about the greenery around the suburban fields, which is all hanging off of the cycling network. Street view yeah. and tried to kind of see what was happening here. And all I got was this kind of suburban setting scene. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was looking at. No, sure. And were they in the winter or the summer? Uh at both actually. Yeah. But and I think sorry, go on. Yeah, but what's interesting is that because I never saw that central greenway, which is okay. the which is the linkage point to the whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah, so I was kind of misperceived. Correct. I misperceived it. You are also to be blunt about this, you're also reading this from an American perspective of suburbia. Yeah, Here yeah. is one of our main cycling uh, routes here. Mm -hmm. And so you see this and you interpret it from Google as your notion of what suburbia is, right. which is uh, really absent from kind of human experience. You know, mm -hmm. it's individuals in boxes, they have bought their plot of, plot of land, and that's kind of it. You right. buy your space and then. But the thing about Houghton is that you do buy your space or you rent your space with government assistance, mostly. But your personal space is your footprint, probably a tiny garden. And then all of this. Yeah. This is all for you and me and our kids and our grandparents um, through all ages. So you will get 18 month olds riding on their little uh, walking bikes here. And you will get 105 year olds riding on their secure bikes, their three-wheelers or four-wheelers, sometimes in an electric wheelchair or something, but usually on a bike. But Americans interpret this without being here, without feeling it, hearing it, smelling it, with their own notion of suburbia. Yeah, what you see if you just were like looking at Google Street View Absolutely. is like some cars parked here uh, and you don't get this sort of sense of connection. No. Yeah, yeah. And this is why the, I wrote an article for The Guardian five, six years ago. So. And the headliner wanted to introduce the article with a reference to um, uh, what is that awful movie about suburbia and it's all a trick in the bubble with the comedian. Uh, the Truman Show. Thank you. The Truman Show. And they wanted to introduce this place as a variant of The Truman Show. And I was like, absolutely no, you can't do that. Because it's telling a story that people already think they know and it's the wrong story and it wastes the value of what this place has yeah, to offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they went with Cycle Heaven. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, okay, I'll yeah. accept that. <laughs> and this is why I want young people here. Anyone, actually, but particularly young people. Yeah. Because it smells, sounds, feels entirely different. And that's a language you're not going to get from a book. Yep, yep. So we are now, there's the ring road on the eastern side. You heard that, Billy, right? Yep. That, that's the ring road. <laughs> and you kind of heard, and you, you kind of got a sense when you heard the car go by, yep. they were going a lot faster. Yeah, so they can do 70 on there. Inside mm -hmm. it's 30, I often do 20. Mm -hmm. I don't care who hates me. Yeah. So we are now going to stop here. And this is the Ring Road on the eastern side of the ring. ring the ring road. So what, what, what does this connect to then? Like if you were going to jump in your car, where would you actually be going? You'd be going around Houghton. Yeah. Or you would be going on to uh, a road over there that would take you to Utrecht. Okay. The Utrecht road. Right. Uh, you might be, you might be um, heading over the west to go to the A27. Okay. Or just over there you've got the A12. So there are a number of motorways, they're kind of in a corner of the A12 and A27. Okay. Uh, so if it's a still night, you can actually hear all the cars and that makes you remember you are in the middle of the country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny, you also said ring road and I had this Texas impression, you know, that it was going to be 20 lanes of traffic. 
There we go. Yeah. Um, and you'll also see something else here. Okay, not so clearly there, but you can see this hill on the right-hand side. So one of Robert Derrick's design ideas is that throughout history, humans have come together and created this space they call the tech of civilization. And they ring that somehow. They ring it with a wall or they ring it with a mound or a fence or something like that. And he wanted to echo that with the ring road being the boundary. And then he, for obviously soundproofing uh, reasons as well, but also kind of aesthetic and narrative and human experience, he wanted this hillock here on the right. And that goes all the way around mm -hmm. how to. So kind they're of buttressed against exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. You are on the outside, then you're coming in. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we've spoken to American uh, students, and they're like, "So, do you have to have um, a special code or a mm -hmm. key pass or a you know?" Oh. <laughs> and they can't understand that it's not a locked gate environment. Right. That it's not for rich people who have to have permission. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just physically built with the notion of we're in the community and then outside are the fast cars. Right. Of course, this is gorgeous in the autumn. Oh, yeah. Really beautiful. I'm going to just take you to this little entrance here. If we can. Yep, sure do. So we're going here? Yep. Alright, so we can see this here, okay? This is quite small. Ah, yes. But, um, we designed the ring road. Can you add? Yeah. And the entrances. What he wanted to do was effectively say, outside of civilization, you can go fast, you're in the car, great, have a nice time. When you come in here, you will come into your entrance, into your borough. So, I don't know what this is, the Hach, I think, my borough is the Valley. You come into the Hach, and that would lead you to all of these houses. You can see it's purposefully bent to slow you down. This green area here is meant to be like a hallway. You walk into your house, you slow down. You hang your coat up, you take your shoes off. Then you are slower. And then when you pass this, you're in your home. Then you're quiet. Yeah. And he does that for all of the entrances. Oh, nice. So this is quite a small one. Ours is longer. There's a much more long, a longer medium strip in the middle. Yeah. To really make the statement. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And the tall building is either side of this entrance. These are supposed to represent like castle towers, like castle gates. So most yeah, entrances I, coming that's in. That's what I could see. Yeah. Most entrances coming in have tall buildings either side. So you are entering the fortress. I wouldn't have seen that except when you mentioned yeah. the sort of buttressed. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when you when you see that, then you can see that sort of connection that flows there. It's mm -hmm. all thought through and it's all about the human condition versus fast machinery. Yeah. And it visually, it visually slows you down and it takes you into a different place. That's the idea, yeah. as well as physically. So there is no part of a road within the boroughs that is a straight part that's longer than 75 meters. Mm. And the idea of that is you will slow down. Yeah. So our road, people get lost all the time because it goes in every direction. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Which drives some urbanists crazy. Yeah. Because they're like, they're so infatuated with the grid system and, and so, that the car needs to be able to move as freely as possible yeah yeah and here yeah. it's like no you're a guest as a car yeah suck it up princess yeah it's yeah. about people here yeah. yeah but you can move everywhere on by bike you can't uh, so yes. yeah the whole the whole system set up for you to move by bike and by car it's hard to move around you yeah. don't move within here in on the car in the car yeah you do it by bike and foot yeah outside go yeah. for it go for it with your car yeah and there is, you know, some people, I get that from some countries that might feel constraining and confrontational. There is not a skerrick of fight yeah. that goes on here with 
I should be able to get in my car and drive everywhere. It's just, why would you? It's quicker on the bike. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's quicker on the bike. <laughs> it's not by accident, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kylie, um, obviously you have been aware of the controversy of the 15 minute city in Oxford yeah. and how all that goes because that was part of what boiled up was, the, was that uh, reaction from so many that what you're saying is I don't have the freedom to drive my car everywhere I want to and then taken to extremes of, of people feeling like they would, they're being held to, you know, a very small area and they wouldn't have the freedom. Okay, so that is just the absolute saturation mm -hmm. of the narrative that the car equals freedom. Right. Without the recognition, which is weird because we live this daily, which is, it's not freedom. We're stuck in right. traffic. I feel ill. My kids are grumpy. I can't get anywhere. How have we not switched that? I don't understand it. You guys do the work. I, I have no patience. I'm like, don't be stupid. <laughs> well, and, and that's what I, that, that, that was the take I wanted from you was because, you know, we're in this professionally, yeah. we're yeah. in this all the time, but you're living in the antithesis of that. Absolutely. And then you see that you must have been just like, what on earth are they talking about? Why? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we know, you know, you and I have played slightly online. You'll put up a post, somebody will put up a post mm -hmm. and you will always get, you know this, it's your daily sound yeah. clip. Oh, that's all fine when it's flat. Oh, let's wait until it rains. Oh, what about the helmets? Yeah. Oh my God, the kids are going to die. Well, yeah. none of this is pretend. This is normal, modern life. Yeah. Children do not die every day. I mean, yeah. stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Just stop it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't know how you guys are going to manage the switch in psychology to rethink the foundational values. I wish you all good luck. Yeah. Please come here. I'll help as best I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the re-entry every year after yeah. taking the students to the Netherlands and going back to Texas is uh, very challenging. Um, it hurts them. Uh, it hurts me. <laughs> I'm not sure I what know. it does to them. I but know. every year I go through this sort of mourning period. And you, you have to have that uh, sort of equity, affordable housing component. Or or the narrative, the social narrative, that to have quiet, to have space, to have freedom to move without dependence in a car, isn't just for rich people. It's a human condition. Right. And that's what was interesting when you were telling us about the affordable housing in the center uh, of Houghton and how it was intentional. And yeah, yeah, and that, Absolutely. that space becomes really uh, like the most valuable place is given over, uh, you know, for equity purposes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's 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 it hurts the brain. I know. Yeah. What do you know? What percentage overall? I knew you'd ask that question. Yeah, because because about... of course he's going to ask that. Yeah. No, I don't know the percentage, but it's a lot. Yeah. We have a lot of social housing in Houghton. I know that in the and I always the number changes you know from wherever I go and ask I ask the same question. Yeah, sure. Uh, but it it's usually somewhere in the thirty percent. Yeah, range. I think it might be slightly higher. Here, okay. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Right. You mean within the Netherlands? No, no, just... like within Houghton itself. But okay. I, I go and like I was in we were in uh, Amsterdam yesterday in this new development uh, right next to the central station. Okay. And I think there it was twenty percent, which is low. Yeah. Uh, and it was just because of the financing. But yeah, financing. Yeah. But, the financing. And, but what I was saying yesterday <laughs> was that if you get 20% in the US, you think you've won. Uh, the lefties and, are taking yeah, over, it's yeah. communism. Right, and, and, and here that's like, oh, that was, that, you didn't do very well no. here, you only got 20. Uh, and I just do want to clarify, the Netherlands is itself going through its political turmoil. Mm, you know, yeah, we have yeah. some rise of the right going on here, as is in the rest of Europe. So mm. these ideas will be challenged and they have been challenged in the 13 years we've been here. I feel that, there was a much more on the ground social daily feeling on the street 13 years ago. Uh, when I talk to Dutchies and say, the Netherlands is much more social than my countries, Australia and England, they're like, oh yeah, but it's changing here, oh, uh, and I get that. But their foundation is so much stronger yeah. for them to erode from. You know? right, right. And my hope is that it doesn't erode as much as mm -hmm. it could. Yeah, the base is still solid. Exactly. The lefty. Okay, we lived in Norwich for six years. One of my 
has written is called uh, Het Groen Omarmed, The Green Embraced. Okay. And this is what this means. Yeah. This is definitely a typology you see in other places in the Netherlands. Yeah. But it's the connections that make it special. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the, the psychopath connections, the human connections? Yeah, all of it. Yeah. Uh. Because it is all of it. Yeah. And people, obviously in your industry, you must come across so many people who think from a techie point of view, from an infrastructure point of view. My point is, those solutions, you guys are all really smart. You know, you can all figure out a technical solution to a traffic problem, it's not a problem. But if the foundational thinking of who the space is for is wrong, problem schmobba. Yeah. You, you, you <laughs> fix schmix, it doesn't mean thanks. Well, and then the, the technical solutions are always really expensive. Yeah, and, and uh, focused the, on the cost. real solutions are much less expensive and more about how you think about the space. Sorry, so this is our hallway here. Okay. Coming in from the ring road, so ours is much longer. So we turn right up there and you hit the ring road. So this is all saying, calm down now. Shoes up. I think that's where the power of Helton is, is to help uh, change those foundational ideas at the very, very, very beginning of how people think about space. Yeah, yeah. There was a moment when we first shifted here, and my son, you've just met, he's up to here. Mm -hmm. Well, he was a teeny tucker, he was not even one. And uh, I had him in the bug feet, and we were riding out west. And my husband and I chose here because it feels good. And we can see it, and we go, okay, oh, this, this works for us, right? But after a while, we ha I had this kind of moment where I was like, oh, this green space, all this lushness, is for me. It's for me. Yeah. And it's for my son. And for my children. We're veering right here. She... And that was a real shock to me. Mm -hmm. Because in my countries, you may pass through, if you're lucky, the rich people's space. Right. But this is not for the rich people. It's like a community in a park. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Without the strangulating set, strangulation sense of what you just said. A notion for some people of a community in a park can feel a little too tight. If you feel that freedoms might be inhibited. But you're yeah, kind of like boring. There wasn't boring. To do, but yeah, yes, there's... it's for old people. Yeah. And, and you look and you just go, no. Uh, these buildings are new. They're on the site of an old pub. And I think they are assisted living for people with mental health issues oh. uh, so this whole kind of beautiful community built complex has been put there yeah. if i understand that correctly okay great green roof i know yeah it's a good one yeah so we are now hitting the eastern side of the green streak We've got a nice big lake here that borders with the ring road do you want to see the lake, John? Yeah. Yeah? All right. See the lake. I'll take it for the lake. That was the right answer, John. Connection to the water. Connection to the water. We're supposed to walk here. It's the, one of the other uh, key things that humans are very, have a great affinity towards. Affinity to a body of water. froze two years or so ago mm -hmm. only for a day so mm -hmm. Abby whom you haven't met she was out there on a skate mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> the whole town was there yeah and you're looking going it's a day how is it really safe yeah it's not that deep you have uh, you can go fishing here got to get a license all that business but again you get the birds you can hear the cars in the background. So the motorway is just over there, the A12. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got the ring road just here as well. Right. 
And today the wind's blowing this way. And the wind's blowing this way, so you can definitely hear the hum. But the you still you still hear the birds. I have got Very a nice. really fantastic app my neighbor told me. It's mm -hmm. called Merlin, and it will um, tell you which birds are currently chirping. <sighs> so you put it up, you turn yeah. it on, and it will come up with the song thrush with the woodpecker. With, I'm so in love with this thing. The thing's brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Turn the football off. Yeah. Put the Merlin app on. Yeah. I love it. The birds are louder than the motorway. What do you think, Professor? Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, uh, for once, at a loss for words. Uh, yeah. It's, really? it's just nice. It's very mellow, and we've just been kind of moving back and forth between the spaces. It's, it's lovely. So from a resiliency and sustainability perspective, how, how does this really fit in what we can learn from, you know, in other locations, other cities? So 30% of transportation emissions, at least in the United States, uh, our greenhouse gas emissions in the United States come from the transport sector. Mm -hmm. And here you have zero transportation emissions because you're either walking, biking, or likely jumping on the train. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the sort of connection to the, the motorway, but most trips are going to be walking, biking, or transit. And so you've just taken 30% off the board. Mm -hmm. And then we're moving through green spaces and a park, which all adapt to climate change. Uh, and you've got both of those elements all in a modern, lovely, wonderful place uh, that's filled with social connections. Mm -hmm. that, that's urban resilience. Yeah. And, you know, you live through the whole just challenge of you know the social resiliency aspect of a pandemic happening yeah absolutely and the energy crisis yeah so we were acutely aware that we did not have to get in a car to go to work yeah to visit a friend to have some kind of social i mean it felt kind of uh, uh rude horrible because we knew that other people had an essential cost that they had to they had to pay it we do not have to pay it we were we were free hands free done yeah it kind of felt nasty yeah you know at the same time as thank goodness yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and the pandemic of course i mean what this place did for people during the pandemic mm -hmm. it makes it sound like a trick it's not a trick yeah. it's just space developed for human beings right it's nothing clever yeah. It's just choices based on people. Yeah. And the essence of people. Yeah. So many communities tried to, you know, manufacture and duplicate yeah. this during the pandemic and create, you know, spaces for people. I suspect what ended up happening for you, and I think you and I even talked about this a little bit in our interview, was that you, you had that ability to connect with your neighbors etc in a pretty healthy environment in the sense that you're out here in you know walk out this, the door yeah walk out the door yeah there's yeah. the world yeah yeah brilliant okay. i know it's a fairy tale yeah but it's not a fairy tale yeah yeah it's a fairy tale we can all have yeah at the end yeah. of the guardian article i just <laughs> said this is a choice yeah people are making choices yeah yeah. And all the people are, who live here are choosing to live here Absolutely. for that. Yeah, you get a lot for that choice. Yeah. yeah. But the people who design spaces that aren't like this, they're making choices. Yeah. 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 Right, we're going to head to the old village and go and sit and have a drink. I have never been to the old village. No. I've never have. All the times I've visited here, I've never been to the old village. Well, we're going to blow your yeah. brain, mate. I yeah. mean, it's just an old village. Yeah. Um, it does have a car park in the center of it, which is insane. I'm going to warn you now. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, did you hear that, Billy? There's a car park in the middle? In yeah. the middle of the old village. Oh, that's oh. funny. Yeah. Oh. It, it actually hurts. It hurts. I think they are working on it. Yeah, I think even they can It grandfathered uh, in, huh? Wow.
right is a children's daycare van. Yeah. Hope you remember this So in, in North America in particular, the school pickup is oh no. is just, you know, a crush of cars. It's just and insane. It's insane. And we, we saw, yeah, that was pretty crowded back there. So there was a crush of people, but that's kind of the whole point. It's like, yeah. ima imagine being able to navigate through that with that many families, that many children, yeah. and not have to be sucking on a tailpipe yeah. the entire Absolutely. time. Absolutely, and taking up the, you know, one person, how many square meters? Yeah, yeah. And the kids' yeah. independence as well. I'm going to take you um, to the ring road, uh, mm -hmm. sorry. The road that joins the north and south has mm -hmm. got a very famous roundabout on it. Oh, okay. Where the cars go over the top and the bikes go underneath. Oh, wonderful. Around around. So yeah. I figured you'd like that. Yeah, yeah. You doing yeah. okay back oh, there, Billy? No, I just was like almost got a tear in my eye what the school situation yeah. back there. It was so lovely and beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? I yeah. mean, the power of that. Yeah. And it's just normal life. Oh, it was great. And then one of the kids in... Uh, uh, you know, who's the buggy dropped. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was like saying bye to the other uh, the other kid who was there, yeah. and it was all just at a human scale yeah. and just amazing. Yeah. It is amazing, and yeah. at the same time, entirely normal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why can't it be like that elsewhere? Yeah. What has happened where the normals are so entirely opposite? So tell me about these. These are a private development. This says own pri uh, private road okay so you know mm, um but yeah it used to be a garden center got knocked down private development okay. i don't know how much of that is allowed to happen in houghton mm -hmm. again houghton is developing and changing so um you know there may be more of that oh those are the frogs they must have a pond there <laughs> uh there may be more private developments happening mm -hmm. I don't know right now uh, how much is being uh, freed up for private developments and how much control the council is holding on to mm -hmm. as far as what they want to have happen in Houghton. You'd probably need to talk to Andre Boltemans about all of that. Okay, but you could, I could definitely see that there was something different about yeah. those developments. Yeah, yeah. And they're also new there. Yeah. So there's a little supermarket there. I love the fact too that we're just snaking around on feet struts here, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, and that is of course the access to, you know, these driveways, these homes, and everything works just quite fine. Absolutely. Yeah. The cars are guests. Yep. These are for people. Yep. The bike is unhindered. You know, we talk about the, the traffic, the, the notion that uh, traffic infrastructure is based upon the body, the idea of flow and veins and, you know, constant movement, etc. Well, that is given to the bike here and not the car. Yeah. And therefore, the pragmatic, practical choice is Just the get bike. On your bike. Yeah, get on your bike. Yeah. In the rain, in the wind, it, yeah. it really, you know, that line that you picked up in our conversation mm -hmm. to be to be out in a coat of car. I mean, right. seriously, the yeah. whole of human history. Yeah. Really? You put a car on because you're worried about your heels and your makeup? Yeah. What? So Have you, ahead. did you ever hear anybody else say that or did you come up with that? No, that's mine. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah, I, I, I use it all the time now, so I'd have to make Excellent. sure I credit you. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Um, because Coach that's what it is. We've got into the habit of, you know, oh, it's a bit too much nature out there. It's not yeah. going to go with my social construction. Right. Therefore, I'd better protect myself with a coat of metal. Yes, a coat of car. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, now I need to make sure I always put a little right. accent on there too. Coat of yeah. car. A coat of car. Yeah. Yes. Great. Let's see if that helps you or not. Yes. <laughs> that might hinder you. It might. It's, they're already like looking at me going, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, but when they unpack it. Yeah. Oh, I know. Then it's, you go, ah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the other one that seems to be quite powerful is that, um, you know, that freedom that car advertising uses to, to you know, alone on the roads yeah. at night, no one else, you're free. You're constantly moving. There's this sense of exhilaration of the wind in your hair, etc. 
actually that's the look you see on the face of children on bikes. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's where it's real. Yeah. And again, so we, are, we see we've got a nice modal filter here. Again, can I am well that. again after yes. long COVID leaves me. Mm -hmm. I will be teaching in that school. Yay! Yeah. Very good. So this is a train line up here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you to the roundabout. Nice. Do not complain. I don't show you the best places in town. That's right. And we're turning left. Turning left. So this is the main kind of um, arterial for cars mm -hmm. to come up to Hedrons. Okay. So this is where your great big trucks will come with their stock for the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. um, cars to park in the supermarkets that are all come on this road. Mm -hmm. It's called the it's called the Molen Zone. Okay. The wind uh, mill uh, zone. zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had here lots and lots of businesses and of course then we had the financial crash in 2008. A lot of these mm -hmm. buildings have been empty since then and now with housing shortage they're trying to you know negotiate their way around different needs and some of these being turned into housing some of them are being pulled down. Mm -hmm. Yeah brilliant. We have yeah. a lot of commuters coming here from outside of Houghton get off the train come to work here. Right. Part of the ring road then as well? Well, not really the ring road, but it's sort of the central uh, vein through, okay. cutting north to south. Uh, it doesn't continue in the same way going into the south. Yeah, so this whole building has come down, they've just started that again. Oh, yeah. services are so that's mm -hmm. where your um, some high schools swimming pools football uh, a church a yoga center you know that kind of stuff that's over there the equivalent on the other side is where the police are the fire engines uh, daycare etc okay. so you can just tell this is you know yeah as this is more normal for yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. And to your point, this is how, you know, the goods and services, you know, yep. are, are able to get to, yeah. into. So this is how service. the market um, stands and stalls will mm -hmm. get up to Hedrons on a Thursday. Right. They'll come via the ring road through this road, which is joining the two, the north and south, and then come up. Right. So this is our famous roundabout. This is it. <laughs> Exciting, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So roundabout on top, and then we have. Bike roundabout. Yeah. It's really good if there's a bad way to here. Yeah. And now we're in the south. Fantastic. We're just going to ignore. Yeah. Kind of like the open ring, but reverse. Yep. Uh, Underneath. Okay. You understand what he just said? I do, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 no, the Hoven ring is a bicycle roundabout down in Eindhoven. Returning left. Oh, okay. And it's, it's elevated oh, up yeah. above a massive uh, car infrastructure. I've yeah. seen that. Yeah. It's really car infrastructure. It's really car yeah. infrastructure, yeah. yeah. And this is really different because and for, at the bike, you have to go way up and over. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was just perfectly lovely on the bike. Uh, and it accommodated the cars above, but it yeah. wasn't overwhelming. No. So it was like a reverse of how you would right, think of okay. it. Yeah. The Hoven Ring is like one of those, like it's super sexy because it's up there and you can take pictures of and it. And it is beautiful. It, and it's, it's fun, fun to ride, ride around well. in circles. Straight ahead under the bridge. Okay. But it's really, really hard infrastructure. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah.
Yeah, that's the brilliant thing about this type of design is that you don't have to go very far to get some relief from traffic noise. No. I mean, you're already getting to the point where, okay, I, if I strain, I can maybe hear it, yeah. but it's and that's because no longer a threat to your yeah. psyche yeah. and your body. Yeah. And even this train line, you know, mm -hmm. even that's not terribly loud. Yeah. So this is all the north. But we're on the western side of the north. Yeah. And there's something very special too about these pathways and these feet struts where you have, you know, an allay of trees and you're oh. just there's, I, I like to call it the sort of an embrace by nature. Het groen omarmed the green embraced. Yeah. And there are, I wanted to show you this building. This is an aged care or mm -hmm. ass, uh, assisted home. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is how close to town this is. Right. So this is here. Mm -hmm. You can see that tower over there. That's where we started. Before. Yeah. So they are within easy rolling distance. Absolutely. I did see a few people, you know, rolling to the grocery store on their mobility devices. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a space for everyone. Yeah. Um, the green embrace. The yeah. green embrace. Um, yeah. Some of the sketches we have in the book are, were proposals for how to do some of these. Yeah. So whether they have, you know, this was in the 70s or so. Right. So there were a variety of proposals. Luckily, they chose these ones. But, um, there were some, do we put up a plastic roofing? Mm -hmm. Do we have, you know, arching lighting? Mm -hmm. All this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily they chose the avenues of trees. Right. And now we're getting into the old village, mm -hmm. which of course has a lot more old architecture. So this right. was a farm once. This is all, we're on farmland now. Right. And this will have some wealthier housing. Right. Do you know approximately the population size of the old village before the the new development started? Three thousand. So it was three thousand people I'm in the sure very it's beginning. 3, 000, yeah. yeah, in the seventies. Yeah. And this is partly what lays at the foundation of Houghton's DNA, they call it. Mm -hmm. Is that when the proposals were put forward to expand, mm -hmm. the people in the old village mm -hmm. said we want to keep it with a village character. Right. We do not want to lose the village character. Right. So if you can build us to 50,000 with the village character, mm -hmm. we're in discussion. Right. And that's what they've done. Right. So Rena, who's 87, she's lived here for a long time. Her daughter's lived here from the beginning. And she, Rena said, we shifted to Houghton in our 60s or so, I can't quite remember, mm -hmm. from Utrecht. And she said, I grew up in a village and Houghton gives me the feeling of being in a village. Right. She said she never feels unsafe here. Right. That people are always polite. And I said, what, even the teenagers? Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, even the teenagers. Mm -hmm. So okay. we're heading that direction. Yeah. And that's probably got to do with no tall towers, mm -hmm. you know, psychologically, those wind tunnels of tall towers. Right. And of course, the amount of time we all spend in each other's company because this is community infrastructure. It's infrastructure right. for people bumping into each other and building community. Right. Moving on as we pass the graveyard. Yeah. This is a very noisy surface to ride a buckwheat on at one in the morning. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that. <laughs> Especially when you're. You have any water? Up here, yeah, but we're going to go to a cafe as well. Oh, okay. If you fancy that. Village. Oh, shade. Yeah, the shade. Uh huh. Yeah. I simply couldn't pass up an opportunity to spend some time here in 
historic village center, uh, have a beverage or two, and uh, enjoy some vegan winter balling before heading back out to some more explorations. Of what this means yeah. until they actually lived here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, and so this is why we need people coming here. Mm -hmm. We, I want people yeah. coming yeah. here. Just to understand that they can be themselves in an environment where the car is not the king. Because we're so hardwired to believe the opposite. Yeah. Do you think that the architecture from the 70s? hinders that story because people see it as something like an experiment that is over as opposed to this sort of evolving experiment. Mm. The architecture from the 70s, are you talking about things like Rotterdam, etc.? Well, no, no, well, sort of like in the, the sort of central core of Houghton where we got off the train. Yeah. You have sort of a lot of 70s sort of inspired architecture. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, hang on. So we're going under the ring road favorite thing. <laughs> uh, this is one of the services areas with all the fire station and the police and all that kind of business. places are in conversation with the dominant car narrative right and one of the dominant car narratives is that uh, we're going straight ahead uh, one of the dominant car narratives is that everything is carved up for the car mm -hmm. and then we as individuals purchase a private plot a, a space that we call our own yeah and so when people come here what they see because it's what they're trained to see is the value in the possibility of what they can buy. Mm -hmm. That house is a bit ugly, it's 1970s, oh, that's a bit boring. As opposed to, right, that's the property, but what's around the yeah, property? Yeah, yeah. How do I live my day outside of that property? So people don't see that. They're not used to seeing the communal space. All they see is what they can purchase themselves. And I've really noticed that with a lot of um, American students left here, mm -hmm. students, uh, visitors, is they might see a house and go, well, that looks a bit boring. It's like, okay, first of all, they're usually brilliant inside yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're full of great big windows and very livable space. But second of all, you're not here to look at the individual property that you may have the yeah. chance of buying. You're here to look at the space between the properties that belongs to everybody. Yeah. And that enhances, no, not enhances, facilitates your life. And the life of your children and the life of your grandparents. I wonder if it's, so it triggers memories of places that people... Sure. Like, cause, like I, I grew up in the 70s. Sure, <laughs> sure. So, so you can't see, so like, your instant reaction is, is in relation to that narrative. Yeah, it's funny, yeah, if sure. I see like 40s ar architecture, I feel differently, but there's something about like the 70s architecture sure. that sort of like sets me in a place. Sure, uh, and that's one of the things that, that you know, we have to learn to not uh, value in the same way. Yeah. You know, it's, okay, yeah, not the prettiest house, but well, what's happening around the house? Well, I wonder if it's just me though. Like the, well, I think the, every generation will have its thing, yeah, won't yeah, they? Yeah, but like, like 70s architecture has been around now. Maybe it's historic. Uh, you know, you, know, you say you like 40s stuff. You should ask your grandmother, what does she think of the well, 40s oh, stuff? She's thinking, no washing machine, toilet outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, rats, you know, it's generational. Yeah, probably. yeah. That's why I asked, because I was really curious, because it's, it's sort of an interesting sort of deal where there's all of this, like the new tends to dominate the dialogue. Sure. Uh, whereas, and that's where we get techie obsessed. Oh yeah. 
you know, hey, hey. that's hey. my neighbour. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where we get techie obsessed. As opposed, to, and we forget how all of this is actually supposed to be about how it is to live and breathe and move. Yeah, yeah. And all sorts of ages and capacities in your life, you know. If your leg works, you're fine. If your leg doesn't work, can you still get around? You know? Yeah. We totally forget that. The green space is so really, like, are just spectacular. This is the south. This is the okay. new build. This yeah. is all built in the last 20 years. Okay. Um, some of it yesterday. <laughs> cars here in the south. Uh, properties are a bit more expensive than in the north. But still you can see it's all built on the same idea. Oh you feel how cool it is right Yeah. I asked that question because I'm really trying to think historically how you situate this like the town uh, and how it fits historically in the conversation but it still exists. It's not like an yes. experiment that's over. It's like it's an not evolving. a museum to yeah, an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. it is evolving. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And stylistically, uh, yes, of course, it's of its time. Everywhere going to court. Yeah. On their own. Yep. That's yeah. an aged care centre over there with doctors and yeah. support. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, any 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 kind of development would always show time signs of its yeah. influence in history. I think that's what's so interesting. It has that that moment in time. That, sure. Uh, but from the very, very beginning about who the public space is for. Right. What is its job? And its job is to be there, open and available for every citizen who lives here of any ability. Which means that the car needs to be kept in sight yeah. because the car is the danger. Mm -hmm. It is quite simple. Radical, but simple. Yeah, yeah. And you can feel it, experience it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, there are lots of orange shirts out. Yep. So we're going straight ahead. See another school here. This one's bigger. I think we had about 20 primary schools in Hamilton. Small little primary schools. Wait, can I ask about that little Yeah. Thing? Oh yeah, yeah. That is to slow down motorbikes. Oh, not motorbikes, uh, bromides. Things that we saw earlier, the noisy oh, okay, okay. Uh, mopeds. Yeah. Let's just slow them down. Mm -hmm. Because they, uh, they'll take off otherwise. That's what I was thinking, and but I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> Shops. 
and here in Costella, the mm -hmm. new build, mm -hmm. that's all in there and it's built upon an old Roman layout. So mm. it's quite small lanes. Right. I find personally it's not my fave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's a busy area. Yeah. And that train station opened when we arrived. Okay. 13 years ago. Yeah, so it's a it's a two train stop. Yeah, two train stop. North city. and south. North and south. Ah, yeah. Modern bike storage. Yeah. Well, we're getting near the water, so that might be why. Right. You definitely get the sense of the newness here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show you on the right up here. Yeah. That was, they haven't even finished that yet. Right, yeah. <laughs> Are you catching this, Billy? We're, that, we're talking about the sense of the newness yeah. here. Yeah, this is all new build. And yet, look, everyone's got their plants out there. Yeah. You know, greening up their, step, their space. Yeah. <laughs> You'll probably get a lot of kids now. Yeah. Pull over here for a picture as well. Yeah. <laughs> Brand spanking new. Yeah. <laughs> you just got on screen. It's very colorful. Straight ahead you're going to see colored houses that were on the Microsoft screen a couple of days ago. Oh. They speak absolutely not for Houghton, but they're photogenically beautiful. And they came about because Robert, the designer, is a sailor and he was sailing in Norway or Denmark or somewhere. Oh, I see it, yeah. And he saw houses like this and he said, I want something like that here in Houghton. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <coughs> so we're going straight ahead onto the big brown oh, bridge. Oh, I see it. I definitely see it. It's like uh, in uh, Copenhagen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So there's a, uh, that's the other side, yeah. Yep, so the kids are out playing. Yeah. We've got some uh, out paddling on the water. Right here. With the ducks. With the ducks. And your colored houses are to your left. Yeah. reinstated right. in this design. Right. So we're going to meet uh, Billy around here. Okay. Yeah, I, I felt that it was important for him to see that there's this side of it too, which oftentimes d gets can totally forgotten yeah. that even exists here. Yeah. 
So. And it's all done on purpose. Yep. It's dangerous, yep. isn't it? All these yep. cars everywhere, all these kids vulnerable. Yep. Oh. Yep. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Really bad, especially all those kids over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, you know, so as a parent, I mean, you know, obviously you've raised children in this environment. Mm -hmm. It was very much intentional. That was mm -hmm. by design. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it must have been really scary. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't get it. Is that a joke? <laughs> yeah. Screaming remains the same. Yeah. No, really, honestly. Uh, we thought we knew what we wanted when we came here. Mm -hmm. And we were right. And it proved to be right. Right. You know, and our kids are now self-confident, socially engaged, yeah. uh, strong, well, well of body, well of mind, you know, yeah, yeah. keeping in mind they go to high school and have all that pressure, like all kids. Sure, sure, yeah. But yeah, you yeah. know, you can't teach a child how to be independent by putting them in a car right. and showing them where a path is. Right. You know? Yeah. They yeah. have to do it in their own bodies. Yeah. And they have to be safe doing it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, helmet schmelmet, just take the cars away. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. If I swing the camera around here too, you know, you, you've got just people out enjoying the sun, enjoying the water, enjoying sociability, enjoying themselves. Yeah. And, you know, and that's very much by design Ab as absolutely. to how the, the, the community was created and designed. Pivotal. Yeah. 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 And that's what this place has to teach people. Right. Yeah. yeah when you sure. start envisaging a space, either pre-existing or new. Yeah. What's the first thing you're going to think about? Yeah. Yeah. Or here, people, greenery. Yeah. This is what Robert calls inversion theory. Right. To invert the normal ways of thinking, which are car first, houses, infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Robert developed this thing called inversion theory, where yeah. you invert that. Yeah. And people are first and cars are last. Yeah. First of all, Kylie, thank you so very much for this, this tour of your beautiful, beautiful home. Uh, before I, I come to you for a, a final little closing comment, uh, Billy, your observations, your thoughts on what you just saw today. Oh, amazing, and thank you so much for the tour. I learned so much. Uh, I think it's really interesting to put these pieces together. I've seen little bits in this in lots of different places, but Houghton really captures all of it together, and I just didn't see it all before I came. So I really appreciate uh, putting those pieces together for me. Oh, you're yeah. more than welcome. Yeah, yeah. final thoughts, Kylie. Uh, come and have a look, come and have a feel, come and have a smell, come and have a ride. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one plug for the upcoming book and what that will bring to the, to the conversation. So yes, uh, I'm involved in the project to translate the book by Robert Derricks, who is the designer of this. And the reason we want it translated and updated is so that it can help everyone else understand that there is an option you do not have to envisage space with the car as the king you can envisage space with the humans and greenery in the first place and this book gives you the history of that and the permission to do it it's got beautiful pictures as well so yeah. you know thank you all so much for tuning in i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below and share it with a friend and until next time this is john signing off by wishing you much activity health and happiness cheers and again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.